So we've received another question from one of my subscribers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read his email and then I'm going to break down the points of this email that stand out to me that need to be addressed. Um, so his email reads, Keith, I get really offended when preachers scream and yell and holler like they're all excited and pissed, pissed off like they're trying to guilt people into repenting and believing the gospel. I've always believed in God, but I haven't always followed him nor obeyed him. I'm guessing he's done with me. I have a gut feeling that I'm going to hell. For years, I have carried a heavy guilt or heavy load of guilt and shame and condemnation. I'm autistic yet highly functional, but I have difficulty learning certain things like Bible, even though I read a verse here and there. Because of my autism, I'm super duper sensitive to sight, sounds and tones of voices. I have OCD, uh, anxiety, I have sleeping disorders. Uh, I'm rather meek and I don't do well with criticism. I wish you could understand what autism is by having your, you wear my shoes and me wearing yours too. If you knew someone who was autistic, sibling, friend, child, you would know what I'm talking about and that I'm not stupid. I've always prayed for God to take away and cure me of my autism, but it seemed like it would fall on deaf ears as though God never heard me. Um, do you have any advice for me? Well, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with each point you made in your email one by one, and I'm going to, you might take this harshly, but it needs to be said this way. The first thing you said was that you get really offended when preachers scream and yell and holler like they're excited and pissed off, like they're trying to guilt people into repenting and believing the gospel. Well, first off, at the heart of your problem is not, is not necessarily the screaming and the yelling. It's what's being said that you have a problem with. I see you mentioned later in your email that you have a problem with criticism, hearing things you are hearing things that are contrary to what you'd like to hear. And that in itself is a problem. Listen, I'm not here to baby you guys, to coddle you guys and tell you guys what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. And if that screaming preacher is preaching truth, you need to accept it. There's a big difference between a screaming fool and a screaming man of God. It's passion that exudes from preaching of men like Paul Washer and Tim Conway. Um, the next thing you say is, I've always believed in God, but I haven't always followed him nor obeyed him. I'm guessing he's done with me. I have a gut feeling that I'm going to hell. For years, I've carried a heavy load and guilt full of shame and condemnation. Listen, you need to hear me. When people say things like, well, I guess God is done with me or God doesn't want anything to do with me. That in itself is arrogance and it's sin because what you are doing is placing words in the Lord's mouth to give yourself a scapegoat. You really don't want God. And one of the ways in which people quiet their conscience is by creating false truths in their minds that say things the Bible never says. What you need to understand, young man, is that if you go to hell, it will be because you chose to go to hell. The Bible doesn't tell us to come to our own conclusions on whether or not we believe God wants us. The Bible tells us to repent and believe the gospel. It commands us. Get out of your feelings and emotions. Man up and believe the Bible. There are no excuses here. If you are a sinner, run to Christ. If you need to be saved from the wrath of God, run to Christ. Isaiah 12, 3, come, you who are thirsty, and drink with joy. Drink water from the wells of salvation. If you are thirsty, go to him who can satisfy that thirst with living water. Okay, what we have to understand is this isn't about the doctrine of Calvinism. Okay, this isn't about election or any of that. This is about a sinner coming to the understanding that they have broken the laws of God, that they have transgressed his law, that they are wicked, that they deserve hell. But in that, understanding the good news that God sent his son into this world to die for sinners. Are you a sinner? Listen, we need to get out of our emotions that are telling us, well, I don't think God really wants me. That has everything to do with you, your pride and your arrogance. That's not a good thing. That's not noble. OK, on the day of judgment, God's not going to say to you, oh, well, that, was, that was such a noble thing that you just thought you were so wicked that I would never want anything to do with you. Oh, praise you. No, what you're going to hear is depart, depart. OK, you work of iniquity. This is not a game. OK, this isn't on, this isn't about your feelings. We have all sinned. We're all on this, the same playing field. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short. We've all fallen short. OK, so you can't look at yourself and say, well, I think I've done too much or I've, my sin has been this bad. No, that's pride. That's pride. OK, you are a sinner. That's it. That's all you that needs to be known is that you are a sinner. Now flee to Christ. Flee to Christ. OK. Please hear me because this is very serious. And you have people that live their whole lives in this self-pity. 
Okay, and the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to die in your sins and go to hell. Okay, time is short. Life is a vapor. Flee to Christ while you still have time. And professing to be wise, they become fools. Now that's God's plan. God's plan of salvation excludes those who exclude themselves. That's it. You want to know who's excluded from God's plan of salvation? Those who exclude themselves, period. You say, well, Brother Paul, what about the sovereignty of God? And what about the great mystery of election? All of it's true. All of it's true. But I want you to know something. Some people have such a one dimensional understanding of this doctrine that they end up saying things that are not true about God. You are completely and fully responsible. And if you do not come to him. It's because you will not come to him. If you come to a conclusion. That. Telling folks the gospel is an empty offer. You come to a conclusion that Jesus Christ never came to. Paul never came to. None of the followers of Christ ever came to. And the reason that men and women come to those conclusions based on the sovereignty of God is because they come up with their own carnal conclusions about what the sovereignty of God means. Look, if you're not keeping your nose in the Scripture all the time and feeling the balance of Scripture and checking your own conclusions by Scripture all the time, you will land in error. You will either say it's a valid offer, therefore God is not sovereign, or you'll say God is sovereign, therefore it's not a valid offer. And you have to and neither are proper conclusions. The proper conclusion is this are men depraved through and through? Naturally? Yes. Is God sovereign? Yes. Is salvation of the Lord? Yes. Is it impossible for man to come unless the Father draws him? Yes. Are men bidden to come? Yes. If they come, will they be saved? Yes. Are they responsible to come and be saved? Absolutely they are. Does Scripture speak as though there's sufficiency in the atonement that if they come, they will find it sufficient to save them and wash them of all their sin? Absolutely. If men don't come, is it seen to be criminal? Yes. If they don't come, their inability is they love their idols more. There's only one thing that keeps men from coming to Christ. It's because they're wickedly married to their sins. That is what Scripture says. And they are so guilty, God is going to throw them into hell and punish them for their rebellion and their crimes against Him and their refusal to come. If men will believe, then the condemnation of God will not hang over their head and they will most certainly be saved. And if they will not believe, it's because they will not believe. And Jesus said, you will not come unto Me that you might, not, that you might have life. And because they won't come, they will perish in their sin and they will be held responsible. And that is what Scripture says says and we are to take the gospel forth and tell men to be reconciled to God based on the sufficiency of the atonement and all things are ready and if they don't come the master of the house is going to have every reason to be angry and his anger will burn on them right to the pit of hell